Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Why don't we stand and just put our hands together for Jesus tonight? And it's good to be in the house of God.
worshiping him with all of you. I don't know about you, but sometimes um, right in the middle of the week, it gets a little stressful. And um, all the cares of life can start piling in. But we get this opportunity. We still have the freedom to come into the house of God and to worship him and to lay all that down at his feet and to just be in his presence and to feel his love and to get our help that we need from him. And right now we're going to take our needs before the Lord. And um, if you have a need that you want to mention, you can go ahead and let us know what that is at this time. Remember my uh, brother, uh, he's in Sykeson Hospital. Uh, he's getting ready to cross over the river, so we need to pray for that entire family. Yeah. Yes. Jesus. Anybody else have anything they want to mention? Oh, I, I need the prayer tonight. Just uh, a request. Yes. Uh, my home church up in Michigan, we got a call last night that um, one of the young ladies uh, that's in the 17 uh, years of age got in a bad car accident and it took her life um, and uh, thank God she, she was ready uh, to meet the Lord uh, I believe uh, but um, that whole church family it just took everybody of course by surprise and um, she's the pastor's niece so uh, that whole church family uh, needs a prayer. Jesus. Anybody else have anything they want to mention? The RCF. Okay. I have a praise report. Brother Brian went through his first uh, cardiac cath removal last week, and everything was fine, so he'll be having one more. And the sister was before that to be just as great as the first. I just wanted to mention the, one of the needs that's on the screen. I really couldn't put any detail in that. Uh, but Arlo is a two year old child. He, his dad accidentally backed over him with the truck. Uh, and he um, he's a miracle to even still be alive. But his kidneys did start working today. We've been praying for a few days now for him. But he's having surgery tomorrow to uh, replace his, basically, for lack of better description, to replace his intestines um, to actually get them back where they're supposed to be. So everything's really, uh, I mean, he's really in the balance every moment. But he is improving, so let's believe for a miracle yes. for that family. Yeah. Also, I'd like to mention I think it'd be okay. If we mention Amy, that'd be Sally's daughter. She really needs our prayers right now. And also, if you wouldn't mind calling out the name Amber tonight when you pray. Um, Amy and Amber, they need deliverance. And they need healing. So if you just pray for them, God knows all about it. And I believe that he is going to take care of it. And uh, we just have to trust him with every need that we have. Sometimes that's hard to do, but God knows the beginning and the ending of every situation. Yes, he does. And so we have to put our trust in him in the hardest times. When it's the hardest to do it, we have to do it. Let's go ahead and take these needs before God tonight. I won't go through every need on the screen, um, but we, we know... We've been calling out these needs um, for a while now, at least most of them. There may be a few new ones on there. Don't forget to pray for our community, for your personal community tonight. Let's go ahead and take these needs before God and pray for them in Jesus' name. God, we worship you tonight. We thank you, God. We trust you with every need, whether it's great or whether it's small. Lord, you know every detail of every need that was mentioned in this place tonight. God, you know every person's need. You know the ones that need healing and the ones that need peace. God, you know the ones that need deliverance tonight, Lord. 
We pray right now, God, that you would just move and that you would work. God, in every life, every person's name that was mentioned in this place tonight, God, we are trusting you with those needs that they have, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, for those people who are experiencing hurt tonight from loss, we pray that you would just comfort their hearts in the name of Jesus. We pray right now, God, for those people who are struggling tonight with addiction and things that are holding them down and keeping them from experiencing the best life that they could in you. We pray for their deliverance, God. We pray that they would turn their eyes to you, God, and to look to you for every need that they have, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, for every need that needs to be supplied tonight, God. We believe and we trust and we pray, God, that you are going to work in it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray for our community tonight, Lord. Help us to reach them, God. We know that there is less time every day, God, to just be able to reach somebody and for their heart to be changed and for their life to be healed. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that your spirit would flow in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, I worship you. I pray that each one of us, God, as your vessels, would be able to allow your spirit to move through us, God, to guide our footsteps every day, to lead us where you would have us to go, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. You are awesome. Hallelujah.
transition right now to our classes. The youth will be going downstairs, celebrate recovery downstairs as well. And the rest of us will be staying right here as Brother Pulliam comes to minister the word of the Lord to us tonight. God bless you, Brother Pulliam. We appreciate you and your ministry tonight. Now when it's time to pray, I want to be there from the start When it's time Well, better start over Now when it's time to pray I want to be there from the start When it's time I want to give my part If there's any shouting done If the Spirit says to run I want to give decided we wanted to do, but tonight we decided to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. Isn't that great? Now God could be doing anything he wanted to do also, but he also decided to be in the house of the Lord with us yes, and to meet us here. Praise God. 
I am so excited. I am so excited. God is good. He's great. Yes, he and is. He is great to be praised. Yes, he is. Man, I, uh, if you're wondering why I'm fidgeting around, me and God is having a tussle. Uh -oh. <laughs> He's wanting me to go one direction, and stubborn me wants to go the, the usual route. Man, and I, uh, I want to I want to obey him. I really do. <coughs> yes, sir. Man. God knows we better listen to him. <laughs> so true. Praise God. This is not a rehearsed lesson. This is simply from the throne of God, okay? All right. <laughs> just like the song that I just messed up real good. <laughs> We're going to mess this message up real good, and we're going to follow what the Lord wants you to hear tonight. There you go. Yeah. Praise God. Believe me, I've got, I've got a lesson that I worked hard on. <laughs> I was up till 3 o'clock this morning working on this lesson. It's all right. The Lord give me something else. Yes. So we're going to go a different route, no pay no attention to whatever we put on the screen up there got your Bible, just follow right along with me. We're going to go to Acts, the ninth chapter. We're going to talk a little bit about being broken. I'm not talking about a broken down car. I'm not talking about a broken clock. Not talking about something that's mechanical, that's broken, but I'm I want to talk to you about being spiritually broken. Yes, yes. I talked to the Lord this morning. Me and the Lord, we we had a real good conversation this morning. I I understand some things, Sister Beth, just a little bit better now. All right. Because when you listen to the voice of God and you can get yes. in train with Him. Yes. You can get in the same mode that he's in, then he can show you some things. Come on, brother. Right. And thank the good Lord he showed me something this morning yes. that stirred me beyond being stirred. Yes, Lord. So I'd like to talk to you this morning or this afternoon about being broken in the spirit with God. We find in Acts the ninth chapter that there's a man after the birth of the New Testament church there was a man that was called Saul and I know you know the story of this but just humor this old man for just a little while. Saul was a man that was out to climb that ladder. He was the man that was reaching for greater heights and, right. and, and more authority and more power. He was, he was the man that he put on a facade yeah. of religion. Right. But he was a man that was out to persecute anybody that did not believe the way that he taught and the way that he directed. Now I'm trying to build a a, a painting here tonight for you to uh, look into and understand. Saul was not a man that you would desire to have as your enemy. Right. Right. He's not a man that you would want to confront and debate about religious things. Right. Saul was a very highly trained and very highly yes, acknowledged Man, he sat at the feet of uh, some of the greatest teachers of the Jewish right. law and the Jewish books that, that could be. And he was very, very learned. He right. had uh, some potential about him that he would, uh, he could be somebody very high oh. in the religious sect of the Jews. Right. Saul seen an opportunity that he could push himself a little bit further up the ladder of, 
of prestige in the religious world. And he went to the high priest. And I'm, I'm trying to summarize as best I can. He went to the high priest and he went to the men that, that could make things happen for him. And he said, we need to do something about these men that are out here preaching about Jesus and out here preaching something that is contrary to what we teach. Yes. Right. And he's made them boast and he said, if you give me letters of authority, if you'll sign these letters, if you'll give me these letters that will give me the authority that I can bind anybody that calls on the name or teaches in the name of Jesus, then I will be the one that will take the blame. I'll put them in prison. I'll kill them if they resist. You give me soldiers. You give me letters. You make me the man that will go get them. Make it happen. Right. Well, lo and behold, they did. Yeah, they did. They gave him the authority. They said, okay, Saul, here it is. Yes. The blood's going to be on your hands. You go get them. You slay them. You kill them. You go get them. You see somebody teaching in the name of Jesus? You see somebody preaching in the name of Jesus? Then you have the authority of the law to take them yes, and sir. put them in prison. Yes, sir. And we expect you to do just that. Yeah. Now let me read to you just a little bit in chapter 9. Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughterous against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to the baskets to the synagogue, that he found anybody or bound any of them this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, now here he is, he's journeying. Here Saul with the letters. Saul with his eye, look what I'm going to gain by doing this. Look what I'm going to become by doing this. Everybody's going to look up to me. Everybody's going to want me to have that higher office. They're going to really think that I'm somebody because I'm doing this. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined around about A light from heaven. Right. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, mm -hmm. why persecutest thou me? Right. And Saul did not know who Jesus really was. Right. He, he thought that this was a false prophet. He thought this was somebody that was out to stir up the people. So he wanted to, to put a stop to it. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, this is Saul, and he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom, persecute, whom thou persecutest. Right. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Uh -huh. Now immediately, this phenomenon, this this. Spiritual awakening. All of a sudden, Saul the tyrant, Saul the man that was going to kill anybody that called on this name or persecute them. All of a sudden, he was on his knees right. and asking the question, Who art thou? Who are you? Right. And 
he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Right. And the men that which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Right. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And notice this verse. And he was three days without sight. Neither did he eat yes, sir. or drink. Now what do you think was going on in those three days with Saul? He was blind. They had to lead him into the city. He was not taking any food. He didn't take any drink. What was going on in these three days with Saul, the tyrant? Come on. Saul that everybody knew was a man that was out to destroy every Christian right. that called upon the name of the Lord. Right. What was going on with Saul in those three days. Well, I'm going to give you my opinion. What I felt like the Lord showed me. I believe that Paul was being broken. Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sir. I believe Paul's spirit and Paul's ideas and theologies and and uh, ways and his what he wanted done and what he wanted to accomplish in life all of a sudden became non and void. Right. Come on, brother. He no longer desired to kill and destroy people that called on that name. I believe that if a man is truly repentant, if a man is truly repentant, that he will be a broken individual. Yes, he will, sir. When I first came to God, I remember so well as a young man, I remember the preacher preaching the word. And I remember as a young man going down to an altar of prayer and kneeling in that altar. And all of a sudden it felt like a great light shone down upon me. I'm not telling yeah. you that I was as good as Saul or Paul, but I'm just telling you it felt like that I had to repent of everything. Come on. In order for me to be broken, in order for me to find God yes, true and, and truthful and faithful in my life, I had to find a place where I was broken. All right. To be broken means that you have been opened up. It means that you would stand before God naked and un, un, unshackled and everything about you. God knows. Now let me tell you something. I know you. You know me. But you don't really know me. That's right. And I don't really know you. I know things about you. I know you're good people. I love you and I think the world of you. But I really, really don't know. And vice versa. But I tell you one thing. God knows you. Yes. And God knows me. So God told me in my prayer this morning. I know the very depth and the dark things yes, in your life that nobody oh, knows. Lord. That's the truth. I know you better than you know yourself. That's right. Is that possible? Yes, yes, yes it is. 
God knows the very dark, deep secrets of the heart. He knows everything about you. When you come before God and you are broken, then God can see what's in there. God knows what's there. Come on, bro. Come on, man. We gotta get broken before God. We gotta let God know here I am. This is what I am. I can I can think that I'm somebody. I can think that I'm the greatest singer if there ever was. I can I can say, oh, I can play better than Brother Steve. I can dance in the spirit better than they can. But only God knows. I'm trying to get down into the deep and reality of things tonight. Right. We've got to realize for us to really find God in an earnest way oh, is to be preach. broken. Preach, Hallelujah. It's to say, oh God, here I am. Oh, this is Lord me. Jesus. I'm wide open. There's nothing hidden here. Yes, sir. I can't hang on to this sin and nobody else will know about it, but you will know. Come on. I have to be broken. Yes, yes. Paul, in his, or Saul, in his journey that met Jesus on the road, there's something that happened in the three days that he was blind and he was not eating nor he was not drinking and they were leading him by the hand. I wonder what it was. Well, I don't wonder. I know God was pulling back the cloak of Saul and sin and showing Saul just exactly Come what on. he was. Come on. For all that Saul knew in his lifetime was that he thought he was really doing good. Right. Because that was what he was taught. That's it. But when he came to the realization and he could pull yes. back the clothes and God could see the very nakedness of what he really was oh. and show Paul himself what he really, yes, really yes, was. Lord, yes, Lord. There was an artist one time, and I read this somewhere, and I, I may get it right, I may, may misquote something, but I thought it was really, really good. There was an artist one time that you could give him a blank canvas and a paintbrush and some paint, and he could paint the most beautiful pictures so breathtaking, he could paint the, the glaciers and the mountains. He could paint, paint the deserts and make it beautiful. He could paint the ocean and make it so real and so beautiful. He could paint anything, flowers, uh, portraits of people, and make them just about step out of the portrait and make it so beautiful. This artist, uh, uh, he, he was so, had such a great, wonderful talent about him that everything that he painted just jumped off the canvas at you. So beautiful. Painted mountains so real and so beautiful and so gorgeous that, that people just awed and oohed over it and just thought, oh my God, what a talent. Oh, what a talented individual. What a man that can do such beautiful work. One day somebody was interviewing him and uh, they said, what? Is there anything, anything that you cannot paint? And he looked at them and he said, yes, there is one thing that I will not paint. He said, I will not do a self-portrait. He said, because that self-portrait shows me what I really am. I may think I'm great because everybody else says I'm great. I might think that I'm something else and something wonderful because everybody else brags on what I am. But when I take the brush in my hand and I look at me and I cannot paint myself because I know what I really am. Yes, and that's God 
looking at us today or me. Let me make this personal. It's me. God looks at me and says, oh, let me pull back the cloak. Let me pull back the covers and show you just exactly what you really, really, really are. To really repent of our sins. To really give over to God. Many times people will come and they'll be baptized. And they won't receive the Holy Ghost. And I mean no offense to anybody tonight. I don't mean that at all. But the Bible says that, you know, according to the scriptures, the plan of salvation is you get buried in the name of Jesus and you, you receive right. the gift of the Holy Ghost with right. the evidence of speaking in other tongues. This is the plan. Many people will come to church and they will go as far as the baptism. But there's for some unforeseen as far as we see, they do not receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Why is this? Well, my philosophy and my idea is that they have not been broken. Can anybody relate to me? They have not been broken Christ, enough. Christ. They have not let God pull back the cloak and say you've got some hidden things that Come we on. need to work on and we need to reveal unto you. Yes. Come on. Those dark secrets that you want to hang on to. Those deep things that you need to let go of. Yes, sir. Yes, we need to find that place where we are broken in God. God, just break me. Just break me and grind me to powder. Make me pliable. Make me a, a vessel on your wheel, God, and mold me and make me and make me what you want me to be. Lord, yes. I want to be broken by yes. God. Yes, Lord. The artist was willing to paint anything and make it beautiful. Take his talent and put it to the canvas. Paint something so beautiful, breathtaking. But the one thing that he would not and could not because it revealed too much about him. It revealed too much of what he really looked like. Sometimes I think, man, you're one handsome dude. Put on a nice suit of clothes and think, man, yeah. I feel good. Then I go look in the mirror yeah. and I see what I really am. Yes. Come on. Yes. Only God. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you that are listening online, you that are here tonight, Wherever, whatever the situation may be, let me tell you. Only God, only God can see down deep inside of you. That's why the Bible teaches us that we're not to judge one another. That's not my place. That's not your place. I see wonderful saints of God. Every time I come to the house of God, I see beautiful people. Yes, wonderful yes. saints of God. I, I adore them. I just think they're the greatest thing. But God is the one that you've got to That's worry true. about. You've not got to worry about whether I like you or I don't. Right. What you've got to worry about is God still breaking you. I think every time that we come to the house of God that we need to let God break us. Let Him break us and let Him tear us and let Him reveal unto us where our faults lie. Right. Yes. I ain't nobody here tonight or in the future or in the past that have ever been perfect in this walk. But I'm here to tell you that God only, and God only can reveal unto you right. the darkness of your life. The things that are you, you are hiding, the things that you are being deceitful about, the things that are, are being held back and is holding you back, spiritually holding you back. Jesus. 
Forgive me. I do not mean to be uh, harsh or prying or, or difficult tonight. But I want to give to you what God has given me. If God wants to break me, then I have to be willing to be pliable in His hands. And let Him take this old chunk of clay and throw it on the potter's wheel so I can be made over again. Yes, sir. Say the potter, if he's not happy with a vessel that he's turned on his wheel, will take that vessel. Even after it's been in the kiln and dried and, and been usable, if he's not happy with it, they say that he'll take it outside and, and throw it in a, a pot, the potter's uh, uh, field or the potter's pile where there's old pots that have been broken. And he, he'll go out, maybe, and he'll say, I... I think what I need to do with this vessel. Woo, somebody needs to get this. I think what I need to do is what the potter's saying. Is I think that I need to take this old vessel. This old piece of clay. Yeah. And I need to take it and water it down again. And I need to crush it. And I need to break it. And I need to reform it. Friend of mine, that's what God wants to do for us tonight. He wants to take us and He wants us to be broken in His hands. Yes. Yes. He wants to take us and break us so He can mold us again. Sometimes Christians sometimes Christians get clouded up in their minds and in their hearts. Sometimes they get clouded up with things that come along in their, their day and in their life and, and it, it becomes a heavy, heavy burden. It becomes something that, that just weighs them down. They say it back in the Roman uh, days during the, their run of the marathons that they would run, that, that runner that would run back in the uh, Roman days uh, would practically run naked. They would just take everything off. All the clothes that they had on, maybe, maybe they had just a little bit of loincloth on or something, but they would, the reason being they'd done that was they did not want anything to in, uh, hinder right. their run right. Right. in the race. Yes, sir. Friend, we are in a race tonight. Ooh, boy, we are in a race for the gold. We are in a race right now that if we uh, if we'll just see see uh, our goal tonight, if we'll just see that finish line, if we'll just keep our eyes on the prize, if we'll keep a running, uh, whether we win or whether we lose, if we keep on running, then the mind is not a matter of who the swiftest is, not a matter about right. who the, the strongest right. is. Right. As the Bible teaches in Ecclesiastes, uh, says it's not to the swift. It's not to the strongest, but it's to them that endure. It's them that says, I'm going to keep on yeah. and run. Yeah. I may not be the greatest. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I may not be the greatest. Uh -huh. I may not sing a song just right. I may not leap for joy like everybody else. Uh -huh. I may not be just exactly as handsome as some men are. And I, I just here to tell you, that I am just who I am, and only God. Right. Right. Well, only God can see yes. down into the deep, deep areas of our lives. Yes. Yes. I'm here to tell you, friend, God wants to break us. Yes. Woo. God wants to break us yes. and He wants to make us. He wants to form us yes. into a vessel that He can use. Right. Yes, sir. Woo. He wants a vessel that He can put on the table. Yes. Yes. He don't want a vessel that he can sit on the shelf 
and it draw dust and dirt and never be used. But he wants that vessel that he formed on the on the wheel. One that'll hold water. Yes. One that'll withstand a hard time. Yes. Be knocked off the table and still not broken, but still a good vessel that can be used. God is looking for somebody that will allow him to break them. Job 16th chapter, and I've got to hurry. Around the 12th verse, I'm not going to turn there and read any of it. I'm just going to preach what I've got here. Job said, I was at ease, but he hath broken me as thunder. I was at ease. In other words, we know the story of Job. If you've read Job any at all, you know that he was very blessed of God. He had so many thousand camels, so many thousand sheep, and he had children that he loved dearly, and when they were adults and out living their, their great life, and he was he was Job was highly blessed of God. And you know the story how that Satan came and uh, was with the, the men of God, the children of God, and God uh, asked uh, Satan, said, where you been? He said, I've been in the earth going to and fro. And, uh, and he said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And I'm trying to make a long story stor short, stor short. And uh, he said, have you considered my servant Job, the upright and, and righteous man? He said, yeah, well, if you'll take down that hedge from around him uh -huh. that you're protecting him with, I'll make him curse you to your face. And he said, okay. So be it. And we know the story how Job lost everything. His cattle, his riches, his children, everything was gone. Everything he had was gone. But the thing that we must realize about Job is Job knew something that Saul did not know. Job knew that he came into this world with nothing. And he can leave this world with nothing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, Job said, I was at ease. In other words, I had it made. But he had chosen to break me. We can fare sumptuously every day. We can be rich beyond our knowledge of the things of this world but when it comes to being broken with God it takes somebody that knows what God can do in their life to break them and let them know hey you are a vessel and without the blessings of God everything can be gone in a moment's time. Yes, Psalms 51 and 17. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The point that I wanted to make tonight but I'm out of time. I knew I wouldn't have enough time to preach this whole thing. But the point being in this whole lesson tonight is to know that God is looking for somebody that will let him break them. Yes. Let, them let him get a hold of their hearts and look down deep inside. And let him pull back the cloak that shows them exactly what they are. Right. When we get to that point, 
then God can say everything is cleaned out. Now I'm going to move in. Right. Many times people will come to God and they will not fully repent. I believe this. You may disagree with me. I, I don't know. But I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost is not going to come in to an unclean heart. If that heart is fully broken, if it's fully repented, if it's fully repented, everything has been repented of, and, the, and God has seen, hey, he's pulled back the curtains, he's pulled back the clothes, he, he's pulled everything back, and he's seen you, and showed you what you are, and we can repent of those things, yes. then God can come in and abide with us and we with him. Amen. Man, let's be broken in God. Yes. Let's let God take us. Let's, let's, let us be broken. I tell you, revival will come out of this yes. if just a few, if not all, would just allow God to just break them and break them up and reform them. Believe me, if you let God break you, they will be things that you'll do and you'll see different in your life and you'll understand why things are like they are if you'll let God break you. There's, a, there's more I could say, but I better quit. God bless you tonight. Let's just lift our hands and receive the word right now. Lord Jesus, help us, God, Lord, to allow you to break us and remake us, to mold us, Lord, to what you want us to be. Hallelujah. Empty us out, God. Help us to 